Hello everyone, how's it going? You know, there's a lot of negativity surrounding this game. A lot of people complaining about DLC, balance patches, crashes and glitches, lack of content, and stuff like that. But the way I see it, not enough people are spreading positivity about this game. So I thought I would do something to fix that, in my own way. Today we're going to be taking a look at the various jutsus in the game and giving them a rating. I'll be rating these jutsus on a scale from A, B, C, and D. I'll talk a little bit about them, how you can use them, how good they are, and give them a rating. This video will be the first in a series. We'll start with the attack types and make our way to the others. By the way, if you need to see my credentials, I have over 200 hours logged into this game so far. I've played about 500 games. I have a 63% win ratio, I have a 1.7 kill death ratio, and I'm about to hit my third prestige. So I think I have some semblance of an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, let's get started. Teleportation Jutsu is one of the first moves you get in the game. Your character vanishes and then reappears after traveling a short distance. You also gain a movement speed buff. This is a pretty versatile Jutsu. It allows you to escape, or close a distance. The movement speed buff on its own isn't that great, but if you combine it with clothing and gear that boosts your movement speed, it makes a noticeable difference. You can also use it in the middle of a combo, so if your opponent teleports out of your combo, you can immediately use teleportation to get out of the way of an incoming counterattack. So I'm going to give Teleportation Jutsu a C rating. It has very niche use, and the movement speed buff on its own isn't that great. That said, it does provide some nice utility. Next up is Leaf Whirlwind. This is another skill you get from the very start. This move teleports you a short distance, and then hits an a decently wide arc. You seem to have some invulnerability frames at the beginning of your attack, that meaning you can't be hit out of it after activation. It also does good damage, and it can break guards. The issue with this move is that it's pretty much only used for breaking guards. It's very difficult to combo into Leaf Whirlwind without a Paralysis Seal Kunai or a Wall Splat. It tends to miss if you use it in the middle of a combo. That said, having a Guard Break is never a bad option. So Leaf Whirlwind is going to get a B rating from me. Now we come to the first summoning jutsu, Great Snake. The snake you summon stands in place and attacks anyone who comes near it. This snake is actually surprisingly good at its job. Being able to place them on an objective, or a base point, is really, really handy. But perhaps the most important use is using it to distract people. By placing the snake where a scroll might appear, or on an objective, you're able to divert attention away from yourself, just lets you get the drop on people or get in a sneak attack. Since usually people will be too preoccupied attacking the snake to deal with you. Besides objectives, the snake doesn't have much use. So for that reason, it's going to get a C rating. Now we move on to Lightning Style Lariat, a very popular jutsu. This move has decent tracking and does pretty good damage. But most importantly, it has super armor. For those who don't know, super armor basically means you can't be knocked out of the move once you start it. Lariat has super armor as soon as you activate it, so you can use it to escape bad situations as well as to attack. Even after the recent nerf, people still tend to spam this move. And while it is pretty good, you can punish the person using it by blocking and then attacking right after. Still, that one negative doesn't stop it from being a top tier move. Lightning Solari easily gets an A rating. We now move on to Rasengan. In the recent update, this move got a big buff. It now has super armor while you're rushing forward. You can still be knocked out of it while you're charging it, but while your character is running forward, you cannot be stopped. This is great as Rasengan was previously just a weaker lightning blade. Being able to charge it, as well as having armor, means this move has a lot of utility. This is on top of the fact that it can knock people away even on block. So Rasengan is a pretty solid choice all around. It doesn't have the instant armor of Lariat and it doesn't reach as far as Lightning Blade. Having said that, it's still pretty quick, does good damage, and it can knock people away. So Rasengan earns a B rating. The next you do is another Rasengan, Sage Art Windstall Ross and Shuriken. Anyone who has used this move more than once knows its problems already. It's too slow to activate, it leaves you vulnerable, and has a very long cooldown. The recent update gave it a buff, allowing it to destroy defensive walls. 
This includes Domed Wall, Sand Shield, and Mud Wall. But it doesn't address the move's big weaknesses, that being the long cooldown and the long startup. On activation, your character is left vulnerable to attack. It's also pretty easy to dodge when you're paying attention. Not to mention, the projectile itself doesn't travel that quickly. So Rostin Shuriken is going to get a D rating. As far as projectiles on the attack types go, there are better options. Rostin Shuriken is simply too slow and clunky to be of use on a fast attack type. Lightning Blade is the next Jutsu. You can charge it like Rasengan, but it travels much farther and it activates much faster. Lightning Blade also has the benefit of allowing you to follow up with a combo afterward. This Jutsu is pretty simple and straightforward, so it earns a solid B rating from me. There's really not much else to add. The Sharingan is next. Despite how overpowered it is in the anime and manga, here in Shinobi Striker, all it does is basically give you another substitution. This is both a good and bad thing. It's good because you can use a second substitution anytime you want. The reasons it's bad are twofold. It can be argued that that Jutsu slot is better used on something else. The other bad thing is, if you use Sharingan, you're liable to get knocked out of your own moves. Sharingan will override anything you do, including using ultimate attacks. So if you have Sharingan active, and you go for Planetary Devastation and you get hit, Sharingan will knock you out of Planetary Devastation and cancel the ultimate out. This also means you lose all of your secret Jutsu gauge for nothing. So having said all that, Sharingan is going to get a C rating. Indiscriminate use is not advised, it's a very particular and finicky Jutsu. The next two moves you get from Rock Lee. Leaf Flash is the lesser of the two. The problem with Leaf Flash is not that it's damage, which was recently buffed in the latest update, but rather being able to hit with it. It has a tendency to miss online, and it's a little difficult to combo into. While it does good damage, and it can extend your combo, Leaf Rising Wind is much, much easier to combo with. With Leaf Flash, you basically need to have them stunned beforehand. So for that reason, it gets a C rating. Leaf Rising Wind, on the other hand, is much, much better. It is basically a better version of Leaf Flash. When you've got someone within range, Leaf Rising Wind will almost never miss. On top of that, it has a tendency to break guards. It's not guaranteed like Whirlwind is, but it's still possible. Leaf Flash can do this too, but since you're more likely to miss it online, it doesn't do you much good. Leaf Rising Wind also allows you to follow up. You can extend combos if you time your attacks properly, or use a Paralysis Kunai. So it gets a B rating for basically being better than Leaf Flash in almost every single way. Next are Pain's moves. Almighty Push is first. This move has a decently wide AoE, an area effect around you. It has super armor, so you can't be knocked out of it. It can extend combos on the ground, and it does pretty good damage. This move pretty much speaks for itself. It does almost anything you want in one move. It can even guard break. So it should come as no surprise that Almighty Push gets an A rating. And now we move on to Universal Pull. Whereas Push was just really good at everything, Universal Pull has a bit more utility to it. You can use this to yank an opponent from a faraway distance and bring them in close. You can also use it at the end of a combo to extend it. Being able to start or extend combos is incredibly useful for an attack type. Not to mention being able to stop someone from getting to an objective or killing your teammate. That said, its utility is still very specific, and it may not work to everyone's advantage or build, so it's going to get a C rating from me. Our next Juju is another Rasengan and another projectile. Vanishing Rasengan. Like the normal Rasengan, you can charge this. However, you instead throw it as a projectile. This move has decent tracking and a decent range. It has a wide AoE on impact, but most importantly, it breaks guards. This makes it better than Ross and Shuriken in pretty much every way. If you're looking for a range type move on your attack type, Vanishing Rasengan is your go-to. So it earns a B rating from me. The final attack type Jutsu, as of now, is Tornado High. Quite frankly, this move is pretty terrible. It can be difficult to combo into, and while it can't extend your combos, it just doesn't do enough. Besides being awkward and finicky, it doesn't really accomplish much other than extending your own combos. Something Universal Pull does much better anyway. As it stands right now, there is no reason to use this move, other than style points, I suppose. Though you will look quite silly if it happens to miss. Tornado High gets a D rating. Alright everyone, that's the video. 
Hopefully soon I will bring you the range type video when I'll be going over their jutsus and giving them ratings as well. That's all from me. Have a good one.